Hey everyone, okay, so in this video we're going to discuss the 2016 uh, theme park attendance numbers. Disney parks overall saw a slight dip and Universal saw an increase, a bump. So I'm going to discuss with you guys my thoughts and my analysis as to why this is happening and what's going on. Okay, so Disneyland Park saw, I believe it was a 1% dip in attendance in 2016 uh, in comparison to 2015. So people are like, oh, what's going on? Why would it dip? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, uh, price increases. Okay, Disney did increase uh, the price to their parks. But I think that's really besides the point because Disney always increases the prices. So I don't think that's really the issue here. The issue, the major issue, is the fact that we're comparing 2016 to 2015, right? Now, I'm talking about Disneyland Park in Anaheim. Now, what happened in 2015 that was significant? The 60th anniversary, okay? In August of 2015, then Disney executive Tom Staggs said that Disney saw its best quarter in Disney history from the 60th anniversary, okay? The 60th anniversary was a huge boon for Disney. People packed that park, those parks, and DCA, um, for that huge milestone. So it's totally logical to, to assume that, okay, in 2016, an off year when the 60th is over, and they're not really pumping out any major you know, attractions or celebrations, there would be a dip. It's completely normal. It's completely un it's it's completely expected. To be honest with you, the fact that it had a banner year in 2016 for the 60th anniversary and only fell 1% in 2016 in my opinion shows a lot of strength. In my opinion, it shows that uh, the Disney parks are in really good shape for it to only lose about a percentage from that banner year in 2016. Okay? So, in terms of Anaheim I honestly, as a Disney fan, I'm not even concerned at all. There was very little new stuff released in 2016. They just opened Mission Breakout like last week, so that's not even factored in to these numbers. Um, I believe in 2016, the Anaheim Park had the Soarin' Over the World, um, uh, you know, redo or reboot of Soarin', and they had Luigi's <laughs> Rollickin' Roadsters. Okay, I think that's about it. And they closed a bunch of stuff down for Star Wars Land. And they got rid of Paint the Night. So, really, uh, these numbers don't surprise me at all. And they're actually better than I would expect. Now, Disney World's a little bit of a different story. Disney World's interesting because Disney World, I think it was last April or May, Epcot premiered that new Frozen Ever After attraction that replaced the Maelstrom. Okay? Uh... Now, Frozen is a powerhouse. Frozen is Disney's biggest animated film of all time. So it's a little surprising to me, though, that Epcot didn't see a significant bump in their attendance due to Frozen. That's surprising, and that's a little bit worrisome, to be honest with you. Um, one thing that could be happening there with that, though, is the anticipation and the buildup for Pandora. A lot of people, Disney World's a different dynamic than Disneyland, okay? We're really annual pass-based here in Anaheim. Disney World is really tourist-based. So a lot of people that are planning vacations for Disney World might have looked at it and said, you know what, yeah, Frozen opened, but maybe we'll just wait a few months or a year and just wait for Pandora to open up and we can enjoy bo you know, both editions at once instead of having to plan multiple trips, we'll just hold off and we'll wait for Pandora. That could have been the mindset for a lot of people planning trips for Disney World in 2016. They just wanted to wait until Pandora opened. So that could have been at play there. But um, in terms of like worrying or thinking there's an issue with uh, you know Disney parks overall, there isn't. Okay, It's completely normal for these places to ebb and flow. And they ebb and flow based on demand and based on what's new and what's coming out. And to be honest with you, 2016 was a pretty quiet year for both Anaheim and Orlando. 
It really was. There wasn't a whole lot. I mean, I'm not going to say there was no new stuff because there was, but it wasn't a banner year by any sense, by any stretch of the imagination. It was not a banner year, especially in Anaheim compared to the year before that, which was the 60th. So now I do want to extend a congratulations, though, to our friends at Universal because <laughs> Universal, you guys had a major, major bump in attendance um, in, our, in the Hollywood Park due to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I'm not a huge uh, Harry Potter fan, but I was actually able to visit um, you know, Universal Hollywood last June, and I had an absolute blast. I loved Wizarding World. Um, it was really fleshed out, and uh, I really had a great time. It was really, really fun. The tram, though, is still my favorite. Just <laughs> for the record, the tram is still my favorite at Universal uh, Hollywood. I, I love the tram tour. But yeah, they saw a huge increase. I believe Hollywood Universal saw a 13% increase uh, from the year before that. And, of course, that's due to Harry Potter. So, another thing that really surprised me with these numbers was how close California Adventure was to Islands of Adventure in the attendance numbers. I think Islands of Adventure barely, like by a few thousand, barely beat California Adventure. But that was really surprising to me. I mean, California Adventure is a second gate, right? I mean, it's a second gate, but it's also, it's not Disneyland. It's not a castle park. It's it's a second gate um, extra, so to speak, okay? I love DCA, but that's what it is. Island of Adventure is really Universal's, like, crown jewel, okay? It's, like, their best <laughs> park, uh, in my opinion, that they've created. So I was a little surprised at how close the attendance was for I Islands of Adventure and California Adventure. That really surprised me. Um, and that's not a knock on Islands of Adventure. That's, that's kudos and hats off to DCA. I mean, DCA, you got, I mean, DCA is going beast mode, <laughs> Okay, it really is. I mean, I, I'm really proud of that little park. I love it, and I'm really proud that that we're that close. I mean, to Islands of Adventure, that's that's crazy. So, but uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on these numbers. Overall, I re really wouldn't put too much concern or worry if you're you know thinking about the decreases for Disney. It's not really a big deal. Plus, we have Pandora now just opened uh, in Florida. That's you know, inevitably going to raise numbers for Florida. Star Wars Land is coming. Uh, Toy Story Land over in Florida is coming. There's a lot of things on the horizon that's really going to boost up those numbers. So, you know, hey, we, hey guys, we had an off year. Not a big deal. It wasn't huge losses. You know, a lot of these parks lost like 0.5 or 0.9% or one point, one percentage point. It wasn't a big deal. But, uh, they're definitely going to bounce back with Star Wars and all this other stuff that they're building. So there's no worry. But those are my thoughts and analysis on these attendance numbers. Post below, comment, let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts about these numbers? It's very interesting. You know, it's cool to talk about this stuff and see, you know, what what transpired, you know, this the, this past year with, with these parks. So let me know. What do you guys think? And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I do content on Disney all the time. So please like and subscribe. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.